On this 80 degree day in sunny Miami, something bizarre is floating around these warm waters. It's a little unreal to see icebergs floating in the Caribbean, but I mean, if we don't become conscious, that might actually end up happening. Mm -hmm. It's Miami Art Week, and this iceberg and giant traffic light spectacle, surrounded by a caravan of water enthusiasts, is the vision of Jimena Caminos, designed to bring attention to the climate change crisis. I think that using art as a tool for change and to engage the community in a powerful message is a way moving forward as a society. What do you think people are reacting to when they're, when they're seeing this iceberg behind us right now? I think it's a very surreal image mm -hmm. um, and it's powerful. It's like a dream, you know, it has the power of a dream. Her dream, like so many curators around the world, is to legitimize and popularize out-of-the-box art. Immersive and interactive works that don't just engage the viewer, but push the conversation forward. Einstein said, before being a scientist, you need to be an artist. So there's a lot of creative process in these solutions, you know? All over the world, huge warehouses projecting Instagrammable moments are popping up, from A.A. Murakami's Silent Fall in London to Team Lab's Borderless in Tokyo. Even an impressionist from 130 years ago is the star of two immersive global shows. These new displays of mind-bending visuals combine artistry and algorithms. Hundreds of engineers, architects, and coders are needed in putting these mesmerizing displays together, reshaping the role of the modern artist. The artists that we choose and we represent make experiences rather than objects. Molly Dent Brocklehurst is the co-founder and CEO of Superblue, which opened with six installations in Miami earlier this year, all created by established immersive artists like James Terrell. Does the modern artist look different today? Michelangelo wasn't just an artist, he was a sculptor, a painter, an architect, a Leonardo, an engineer, a writer. You know, I think that these kind of multifaceted artists are now really coming back. Unlike traditional museums, where paintings are surrounded by no touching signs, Super Blue encourages just that. The imagery in this room envelops you. Waterfalls cascading around your hands. The wall is interacting with my touch. Flowers blooming at your feet. I think that people want to feel that they have an accessibility to art, obviously that they have a great experience, that they're inspired, they're provoked. That's pretty unbelievable. Molly walked us through a room full of soapy clouds. Ah, it makes you feel like a kid again. Seriously, it? this is a, a playground. <laughs> the masses of bubbles representing life, death, and rebirth. And this trippy mirror maze called Forest of Us feels like you're in a dream space. Represents the relationship between humans and nature. Created by famed stage designer Ez Devlin, whose work includes Beyonce's Formation World Tour and the weekend Super Bowl halftime show. So the room is shaped like the lungs. What do the mirrors represent? Uh, the mirrors obviously re represent our us and our reflection and ourself and our experience with nature and our experience in the world and our visual journeys. That message may take a back seat in a space that screams social media, but Molly thinks that's a win too. I think Instagram is a really important tool to get people to come and get people to feel like they, you know, they see an image and they want to do it themselves and it gets them in here. Are you seeing people appreciate art who you otherwise normally wouldn't, you think? A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. The people who come, we call them experience seekers. You know, they come from everywhere, families, couples, you know, all kinds of people. It's really exciting. Places like Super Blue are looking to take their experiences to all corners of the globe. That is the idea. With the financial model, that's when the artists really start making a revenue share, is when the works have been around a little bit and they travel and all the production is paid back on them. But it's expensive. Unlike traditional galleries, Super Blue's artists receive profits from ticket sales on top of commission fees. We're right across the street from the Rubel Museum. It's $15 for entry there. It's upwards of $57 to get in here and see all the exhibits that are on display. Why is it so steep? The production cost on each of those artworks is insane. It's insane. So, you know, we are, you know, we're charging what we need to charge in order to be able to make the business run. This interactive art world is even attracting artists who are exclusively online, like Danny Casal, AKA Cool Man Coffee Dan. This is kind of like what the inside of my brain looks like, to be honest with you. Just a bunch of characters floating around. 
best known for the 2D animations he posts to his millions of Instagram and TikTok followers. Danny is now selling plushies, coffee beans, and cups of coffee priced at $1,000. $1,000? Yeah. Why? On the actual cup, live right in front of you, I'll draw that one of one piece of art that can't be replicated elsewhere, you know, and I, I catch your vibe, I get a little bit of your story while I'm talking to you. I'm okay, so we're getting Staten Island vibes here. What's like the most famous thing about Staten Island, would you say? Uh, Pete Davidson now. <laughs> drawing right in front of you, so it's a very personal experience. But most people can't afford a thousand dollar cup of coffee. Totally, Who yeah. Who is this for? This is for whoever wants to collect art and be a part of this moment. But there is something for everybody here. I've been saying the vibes are free. You could come in and walk around, enjoy the music, enjoy the people, enjoy the atmosphere, look at my art. I did want to make sure there was something for everybody. This type of immersive art experience is his way of visualizing his unusual transition from the digital to the physical space. In a weird way, uh, my whole story uh, and progression of art happened totally flipped compared to most people today. Uh, a lot of uh, physical artists are figuring out how to turn digital, and uh, it's a little bit of a mad dash. But with me, I, I've been digital my whole life. It wasn't until quarantine uh, when I was really bored and I thought, hey, like, why not like, get some canvas and pass the time and figure out how to do physical art. No matter what form the experience comes in, there seems to be a consensus that immersive and interactive exhibitions make art more accessible to all. Do you see this as the future of the industry? A hundred percent. The experience is something that you do with other people, and that's really important. Art is much more than, you know, something hanging on a wall. Art can be anything that has a creative process attached to it. Science can be art. A lot of things can be art. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.